On today's episode of the Procedurally Generated Show, Shannon returns to tell us what's on the horizon, Tony learns about jungling, and Ethan continues the farm life. We talk about the biggest news stories of the week, and we have a discussion about what video game movies or TV shows we think are the best we've ever seen. Howdy, howdy, everybody. Welcome to episode four of the Procedurally Generated Show. I'm your host, Tony, and joining me this week, I've got Ethan. I'm back. No, you haven't left. Oh. This is confusing and awkward now. Moving on. This is your this is your fourth straight episode of the Procedurally Generated Show. You haven't missed one yet. Time is but a window or something, something, Ghostbusters 2. But I'm still here. Okay, you're still here. Also joining us this week, Ethan, Shannon is back. <laughs> I was closer to you last week physically than I have been in a year and still missed the show last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. drove, we drove all the way to Oklahoma and still wasn't on the show. <laughs> you could have gone we to... Were a... <laughs> Go ahead. Ethan. You could have gone to Tony's house or recorded from Will's computer or something, but no. <laughs> Yeah, we were in the same city last week, Shannon and I, and I was here. He was off playing video games with some people or something. Hanging out with the cool kids. That's right. So what did you end up playing after I left that day? Because I was there for a little while. Let's see. Uh, they they hooked up two multi-tabs to a PlayStation 1 to play Micro Machines, nice. which was just utter chaos. Uh, then they used that same setup to try and play one of the NFL games. I, I know nothing about football. It was like <laughs> it was like a 1998 game, and it was eight people on the same team versus the computer. So I didn't even know there were games back then on the PlayStation One that would let you do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't believe that it was eight people on the same team, <laughs> and everybody lost to the computer. <laughs> it was so funny, <laughs> just just everyone screaming at the television. It was great. I'd hate to be like the offensive lineman in a football game because you don't get to do anything. I I I know not what an offensive lineman is. So. <laughs> Wait, you know that line in front of the quarterback? The yellow thing on the TV? No, that tells you how far you need to go to no, get a he, first down. He means the players that are keeping the, the guys from running over the guy that's got the ball. Yeah, the five people that stand in front of the quarterback at the start of a play. Okay. That's the <laughs> offensive line. You have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> no clue. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I am I am 100% ignorant when it comes to most sports, so... See, if you lived in Texas, you would have known what it was and been, like, completely educated on it. Well, football is, like, the holy sport in Texas. Yeah, I think that is football, very true. Is more, football is more popular than church, I think, in Texas. Well, they did say six-man football was, like, the Bible of football or something. I don't know. Yeah. I played six-man in actually... high school, so... I've never actually been to a school that was small enough to do six man. I thought it would be cool to watch at some point. It's very fast paced. <laughs> I imagine. I imagine it is. And I think the scores are much higher. It's like not un unheard of to have points, you know, in the in the hundreds. Uh, so. I wouldn't know. I never saw them that high. <laughs> <laughs> so well, all right. <laughs> Shannon, you're yep. back this week. Yep. What game have you been playing while you're gone oh man I, I played a handful of, of portable games this week but the one thing that stole the show on friday was uh forza horizon 4 i really yeah i pre-ordered the ultimate edition so i could play it four days early not just for the purpose of four days early but this is this is like one of the few ultimate editions that actually felt like a really good value um, as far as what was included, so what do you get for that extra money aside from early access? You okay? You you, you get the early access. You also get uh, two car packs that are exclusive to the ultimate edition. 
uh, which is a total of 21 vehicles right out of the gate that would have otherwise costed extra money. Mm -hmm. um, you get the car pass, which is basically every vehicle that they'll put out for it over the next six to 10 months, give or take. It, it's just all of the content that, that they'll add to this game before the next Forza Motorsport, which is like the, the actual sport racing game comes out sometime next year, if I had to take a guess. Yeah, probably. Um, you also get both expansion passes, which they haven't said exactly what they are, but with Forza Horizon 3, you got the Hot Wheels expansion, which was amazing and huge. And then they did the Blizzard Mountain, which added the whole snow, um, like just a whole in winter themed area to the to the game, which changed the dynamics of driving completely. Um, both of those packs for the for Forza Horizon three were twenty dollars a piece, and the expansion packs for uh, Forza Horizon two were somewhere in the same price range. Mm -hmm. So, for the price, like the the retail or the standard edition of the game was 60 and the ultimate edition was 100 um so essentially for what i would have spent on the two expansion passes i also get all of the cars that are coming out and i get the vip like i don't know what you want to call it it's it's like a flare and it's a status in the game so anytime you earn credits which is your in-game currency you you usually get double because you're a VIP member. Yeah. It just kind of helps accelerate the game, um, make it to where you don't have to always be racing to earning more cars. Oh, that's cool. Now, one of the things I've been seeing with the lead up to this game, I've been, commercials are everywhere for this. Like, and I love the commercials. I think they've done a fantastic job with the commercials for this game. Yep. Like the, the tagline is like four changes everything or something. Um, but like the big thing they're promoting this time around is the weather yeah when and the changing seasons how how does that work have you seen any of that absolutely yet? so they may as well call this game horizon or forza horizon for seasons so um <laughs> it the the game alternates from summer to autumn to winter to spring so um after you get through the opening segment of the game which takes about five maybe six hours uh you you will work through all four seasons as you are earning your status in the horizon festival mm -hmm. then once you get your wristband you get dumped into whatever the current season is with the online server so every week the seasons change right okay. now uh, the game launched with it being summer season and I think on Wednesday of next week, or Wednesday of this week, as of the show going air, uh, being aired, the um, uh, it'll change to autumn, and it just follows the the regular season pattern. Cool. That's cool. Some of the biggest some of the biggest changes to this are first of all your your terrain changes completely. There are some areas uh, of the map that will be uh, a huge lake, and you'll see an island out in the middle of the lake. And you can't get to it in the summer because you can't drive your car through that deep water. Um, in, in the winter, that lake freezes over and you can go out there and there might be a barn find that's only available in the winter. Uh, barn finds are like the, the hidden cars all around the game. Uh, every now and then you might, you might just find uh, one of the ones before, I, um, before I, I got off this evening was I found a Peel P50 which if you guys oh seen, man i love that car okay yeah mr bean <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the one that's the one reference point i have in mind for that it was point. also i think the car that steve urkel drove in family matters way back yeah. in the day for anybody that's as old as i am he had to ride the speed he was going on the chalkboard <laughs> it's uh it's a, uh, it's definitely a unique car and the first thing <laughs> i went the first thing I did when I when I got it, uh, there's a there's an achievement for winning a race in that vehicle. It's yeah, a, that's that's impressive because the top speed is like five miles an hour. No, it's it's it, it's got a top speed of about thirty five. Okay, but it <laughs> if you're going downhill, 
it was a matter of finding the right race to go into and then dropping the the uh turning off the online connection and then dropping the uh the the ai difficulty down to the easiest setting oh my gosh <laughs> so but yeah got the achievement Cha-ching. um man uh so and then you also have like the 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 difference with everything you see so um the the sky boxes like the the um just the sky changes hugely uh so in the winter time everything's overcast and uh just has that that real gray feel to to everything you see um in springtime it's it's ranges very drastically from bright and shiny to all of a sudden a storm will come out of nowhere and you're driving through the mud um in the summertime it's mostly uh just just really hot and everything's dry uh which makes a big difference with your with your tires like the heat with your tires your traction mm-hmm. on the road um and then in the fall you get the nice pretty autumn leaves crunching under your tires as you're driving so, nice yeah this game looks beautiful it absolutely does. i mean this is i, I can't I can't even imagine how sick my wife is of hearing me talk about how pretty this game is. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's it's uh, I've got it running in quality mode because this is also I think the first Forza game that gives you an option to switch between a quality or or adjust a performance slider. So you can um, you can actually choose to lock the game at 60 frames a second and leave it at 1080p, or you can put it in the super pretty version which is 30 frames a second but you've got hdr you've got all this really pretty motion blur they've got uh, real-time reflections in the mirrors and on the on the hood of the car so like you'll be driving in the summer with the trees all around you and you see the reflections of the trees that you're driving by in the hood of your car it's that sounds fantastic oh it's just i i love to drive in real life and I know for a fact that 90% of the cars I'm playing in this game, I will never get a chance to get behind the wheel of. It's it's amazing the amount of detail that they put into these. Um, like just everything from from the way that they sound to you can you can go into Forza Vista, which is you you just go and look at the car. You have complete control of the camera of the you know of the camera looking at the vehicle on a showroom floor. You can pop the hood. You can zoom all the way in and look at the look at the engine block. You can go all the way to the back side of the vehicle and pop the trunk. You can drop down and look at the tailpipe. You can also customize almost any single part of this you, using that in-game currency. You can buy you know a new suspension kit. You can buy new rims, new tires. You can put a spoiler on the vehicle. You can do pretty much anything you want, and it's awesome. <laughs> I've been playing NASCAR Heat on the PlayStation. I wish that game looked as good as the Forza games do. Um, cuz it's pretty, but it's not anywhere close to the level of pretty as the Forza games. Yeah, I I'm th- this really is a playground. It it is a really pretty playground with a bunch of ridiculously expensive cars <laughs> yeah um the online is also something i really wanted to talk about so you're because the seasons are constantly following this this online pattern uh once you get through that introductory period and you do make it into the the forza roster um which is essentially just getting you through the tutorial and the beginning of the story um you you hit a point where the game opens up and it drops you into an open server with up to like 72 active people all at one time. Um, you can create a convoy of up to 12 other of you and 11 other drivers. Mm -hmm. So you can have 12, 12 people in a convoy and you guys can either race together or do some of the hashtag Forzathon missions, which the Forzathon stuff used to be uh, like a week-long event, and you would have like four challenges, and those four challenges would give you specific rewards based on what they were. Now, the way Forzathon works is every hour, there's a specific mission, 
And that mission could be tied to just your convoy, or it could be tied to global. So one of the, one of the Forza, Forza Thon things I did today, it was um, uh, there needed to be, over the course of that hour, there needed to be a total drift distance of like 320,000 miles globally. Good and if, it, if it or it was like something or it might have been 32,000 miles or like just a huge number and you have everybody who's playing online chipping into that and if it's achieved by the by the global audience everybody gets these Forzathon points that you can then go and buy these exclusive cars or uh, like you you can buy um, clothing for your character or uh, victory dances at the end of your race and stuff like that that sounds cool yeah it it really makes me feel good uh and like there's always something to do be it simple silly stuff like you know drifting with a bunch of strangers or actually going to some of the scripted races that they have throughout the game so cool sounds awesome it is i want more people to play with (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Ethan, you need to hook that Xbox up. Oh, I never got D hooked up, so it's just not turned on. We need to turn it on and grab some Forza. Uh, I can't reach it from here. <laughs> I don't think he's talking about right this minute. I mean, I'm sure if he... if He probably if is meaning this him, minute. <laughs> he'd let us, you know, he'd make us turn the show off and go play Forza, but we can't do that. Some, um, I've got one other thing I wanted to talk about with the with the Fort, with um, Forza Horizon Four. Actually, two things. First of all, if anybody's interested, there's a really good demo on Xbox Live right now that takes you through uh, like the introductory race that drops you into all four seasons, mm-hmm. and then it gives you like the first hour and a half of the game and about a third of the map. So mm-hmm. like, if you want to just if you've got an Xbox One and you want to just check out how good it looks or see if it's for you. That's a really good, good way to just jump in and get your feet wet with it. The other thing that I think is weird, um, influence is your new like level. Like the way you gain your level is you're, you're getting influence with people in the Forza, uh, the horizon festival. Mm -hmm. Like that's what determines your, your level when you're racing and, um, like the every time you level up, you unlock a wheel spin or like just something, some some perk just for leveling up. Um, they have this new tie-in with Mixer, which is, uh, as Ethan put it before <laughs> the show, not Twitch. Um, it's like Microsoft's streaming service. Yeah. If you have your Xbox Live account tied to your Mixer account, and you watch. Forza streams, you earn 500 influence points for every five minutes that you have that stream going. Just so you can essentially walk away. Yeah, you can essentially just leave it on to auto jump to the Forza channel and just keep getting. You know, just I, I mean, my laptop has been powered on and running and just. <laughs> streaming all day and I'm, I'm leveling up while I'm racing and I'm not really doing anything you know I'll, I'll go back to my house in the game and it'll say hey you're doing a great job on Mixer here's 7,500 points here's 12,500 points you just kind of dump stuff in it's, it's silly but it's also like you said they, their advertising has been really good this is probably just another clever way to get people in but it wouldn't surprise me if they kill it within a few months because, or, or a few weeks, because they, I, the levels always made a big difference with, um, uh, with the like ranked events and stuff that they do, because there are yeah. some people who take this Forza stuff super seriously, like yes, like money tournaments and all that kind of stuff. So it wouldn't surprise me if this system gets shut down soon. It's cool. But it's broke. Mm-hmm. All right, was well, that it? Yeah, that's it for me. All right, what about you, Ethan? What have you been playing? I am still playing some Stardew Valley with Jason. Okay. Pepperidge Farm is doing great. 
Awesome. He's Jason has gone out of his way to, I'm going to say min-max our crops at the moment, since we have a bunch of auto-watering devices and such. I think those are called sprinklers. Yes. <laughs> I was using the technical term, but yes, sprinklers. <laughs> Uh, we reached uh, uh, autumn on there finally. Nice. So it was how good... long? How long is the season in that game? Thirty days. Okay. Thirty in-game days. So, like Harvest Moon, you go to sleep and the next day arrives. So. Yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, so autumn came around. We decided it was a good time to redo stuff. So he took the time to tear down what plants weren't going to regrow for this new season and cleaned everything up and I went and cleared the entire rest of the farming area got rid of all the dead trees and he got rid of some big rocks because he had a better hammer than I did it was a good cleanup job and uh, we reached the end of the, the, the deep mines on there thought there was a hundred floors Nope, there was 120. Gave us a skeleton key, which we don't know what it's for. We haven't, I haven't bothered looking it up either. And it opens doors, I bet. Oh, I mean, we got to find something for it to unlock first. And we also found out that uh, fishing is a great way to make money as well. It's probably one of those things that you can do fairly quickly and earn a bunch of cash. Yeah, and there's a lot of fishing spots as well. And we've actually started working on like uh, relationships with town, fo the townsfolk here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, well, basically, like we both have our own person chosen. He picked someone based on trying to complete a mission, and I just I picked a waifu on there and trying to work on getting her affection. Raised. You do the same thing in Harvest Moon. Yeah. Uh, the downside is I, I her this character her dad had a conversation with mine early early on, mm -hmm. and basically saying she's got a bright future don't get in the way of it. And then she comes oh, back no. and, she comes back <laughs> in the room and it's like, do you tell her or do you say nothing? You told her. I said nothing. Oh. <laughs> I mean he can't stop me. It's just a scene. But... When I played Harvest Moon, it was usually just the first first person. You know that I encountered. I was like, okay, that's who I'm going to be. You know, my character's going to marry. But I never put a lot of thought into it. The first one you encounter is usually the farm girl, isn't it? Well, it depends on which game you're playing. Yeah, but generally it's the farm girl. Otherwise, it's librarian or the nurse, or there's Karen, who is supposed to be the hardest one to get, which is actually yeah. fairly easy, the same as everyone else. Probably could have phrased that better. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, just doing the farm life. And that's what we do on Pepperidge Farms Farm. There you go. <laughs> oh, we did uh, We did get a, uh, a, a, a house built for some kind of animals. I'm not sure what kind. Jason just had it built. And we don't have any creatures that live inside it yet. You need to get some animals then. Yep. I know it's not for chickens. No, those are usually pretty small enclosures. Very true. I mean, not always, but most of the time. They're much smaller than like, you know, a barn that you would build to put horses in. I don't think this is the size for horses. Maybe like pigs or sheep or something. Okay. Not really sure. No one's told me. Well, hopefully you find out soon. Eventually, I'm sure. What have you been playing, Tony? Uh, not a lot this week, actually. Um, it's been sort of a busy week. Uh, but I did put a little bit of time into another free-to-play game that just came out on the Switch. Ooh. Um, basically, any time a free-to-play game comes out on the Switch, I download it and play it. And, uh spend a lot of time with it. I haven't spent too much time with this one, actually, though. Uh, Age of Valor came out on Switch this week. I think it's called Age of Valor. Um, but it is a MOBA 
similar to games like League of Legends. Uh, Arena of Valor, sorry. It's what it's called, not Age of Valor. Arena of Valor. Um, this was originally a mobile game out of, I think it's out of China. Tencent is the developers, um, if anybody knows that name. They're the ones buying up uh, most video game companies that they can that are uh, popular, like League of Legends. Pretty much, yeah. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, they, they had actually approached the League of Legends developer and asked them to do a game like this, and they were told no. So They asked... Uh, oh, jeez. I forget the company's name, but they asked for League of Legends to be made a mobile game. They said, yeah. they're not going to do it, so Tencent so they turns their... around and releases not League of Legends. <laughs> Yeah, it's totally League uh, of Legends. It's it's basically League of Legends. Yeah, I think there's a lawsuit going around that right now too. Really? I think. So, I mean, if you're unfamiliar with what this game is, it is a well, massively online battle or multiplayer online battle arena, um, MOBA for short for anybody. Uh, but you pick a character. Uh, the roster I think has 39 different characters, and there's different classes. There's you know, bigger, stronger characters, smaller, faster characters, wizards. I don't, I cannot remember all the different types of classes. Um, but it's all free to play, and you earn in game money to buy new characters, or you can just spend money to get additional characters should you choose. Um, on the Switch, there are multiple types of games. You can do 1v1, I think 2v2, 3v3, or 5v5. Um, and then the point of the game is to get from your side of the map to the other side of the map, destroy the uh, the enemy's uh, central point, basically, in their area, and then once you do that, you won the game. Uh, along the way, there are different lanes that you can take, uh, three main lanes, and then in between, there's this area they call the jungle, which is... Uh, I, I still have no clue why. I mean, other than it's just like a sort of wild area. It's generally overgrown. Lots of different paths you can take and, and things like that. Um, but in each of the three main lanes, there are these defensive towers that you have to destroy. Um, otherwise, as you're trying to go through it, you're going to take a, a ton of damage and it's going to be easier for enemy characters to kill you. Um you really you have to you have to work together with your teammates. I have found if you try to go alone, you're generally going to die. I still have no idea what I'm doing in this game. I put sounds like three, a mobile. three or four hours into it this week, um, and I have no clue what's going on. That's a mobile, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, that uh, the that lawsuit that was actually ten cent suing an, uh, another company uh shanghai moonton technology company or something okay and that they won that as of uh like three months ago oh okay so it's been a while maybe two months ago i don't know somewhere in that range um i i would like to play more of this and try to maybe figure it out i was having some fun i was generally winning most of the battles that i was playing in did have a couple that I lost, uh, or my team lost pretty handily. Uh, the first night it was available, uh, a couple of the guys in the Facebook group and I got together and played for you know a couple hours. Um, all of us trying to stumble through and figure out what was going on. Um, we had teammates who apparently had been playing for a while, trying to use in-game communication you can't talk to each other there's no voice chat with the game yeah. um, so trying to trying to do things in the game to get us to go to particular places and do things and we just we had no clue what was going on um, I'm gonna watch some videos this week I watched a couple uh, you know beginner style tutorials to just try to figure out what's going on in the game and see if I can understand get a basic knowledge of how a MOBA works um, and and you know determine what the jungle is all about and what's important in there and what's not important to focus on and and doing all that I, I've been trying to focus more on 
killing the other team than I have been securing objectives, and that's probably a bad idea. Uh, you probably need to figure out which character is going to be right for your playstyle as well. Uh, yeah, um, I have been playing a couple of different characters. There's a there's a couple that I sort of like, but there's not one character like within Paladins where I found a character I'm really good with in Paladins. I haven't found that character in Arena of Valor yet, but there's 39 characters to choose from. So um, I've got a little bit of ways to, I've got a ways to go to figure out which character I want. I did download the mobile version of the game and played around with it a little bit. My phone barely handles it. So um, I'm not going to put a ton of time into that, but there is an event going on right now where if you play the mobile version of the game through, I think it's October 8th, any characters that you've earned in the mobile version of the game, you can transfer, you can't transfer the character to the Switch version because you can't connect your accounts together. Um, but what you can do is um, any characters that you've earned in the mobile version of the game, you'll get 10,000 coins per character on your Switch account. So okay. you can essentially just rebuy the roster that you had for the most part on the mobile version over on the Switch version. Cool. So uh, that is kind of a neat thing. I think right now in the mobile version, I have nine characters. So if I transferred that over, I'd get 90,000 gold on the Switch version of the game to buy new characters and, and skins and things like that. Um, so I'll, I'll hopefully put a little bit more time into that. I'm working on Valkyria Chronicles 4 for review right now, so that's probably what's going to take most of my time this week. Um, but that's really all that I've been playing. So let's take a quick break. We will come back and we'll talk about some of the news that happened this week. All right, so in the news this week, Sony did something a lot of people have been asking for. We weren't sure was ever going to happen, though. They're releasing the Nintendo PlayStation Mini? No, no, that's still that's still a couple years away from happening, probably. Oh. Uh, no, they actually opened up crossplay, sort of. Sort of? Sort of. Uh, they're doing a beta test of crossplay with. Uh, I'll let you take a guess what game. Oh, oh, oh! Is it Overwatch? No. Minecraft? No, surprisingly, that's one of the ones I thought might have been a possibility. Diablo uh -huh. three. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Fortnite. Oh. So but you, they, we already know crossplay works on the. We system. do know crossplay <laughs> works with Fortnite. <laughs> uh, Epic Games, you know, very sneakily, I guess, and, you know, accidentally enabled crossplay a few months ago, uh, and then quickly turned it off when Sony said, "Don't do that." Shake so they turned it off. at them, just say, "No, no, no." Yeah, no, no, Epic Games. Uh, they say, Sony says they're treating this like a beta. Uh, PlayStation chief John Codera said, we recognize that PS4 players have been eagerly awaiting an update and we appreciate the community's continued patience as we have navigated through this issue to find a solution. You didn't do anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> the first step will be an open beta beginning today, which I think was Tuesday, uh, for Fortnite that will allow for cross-platform gameplay, progression, and commerce across PS4, Android, iOS, Switch, Xbox One, Windows, and Mac. Uh, so that means cross-play, you could link your accounts together. Uh, originally, for the first couple of days, there was no way if you had created a second account to have PS4 and Switch stuff or whatever. There was no way to, to link those together. That has changed. Uh, Epic says that they're working on two solutions. One of them is actually available now, and that was just unlinking... Uh, one console from a Fortnite account and relinking it to another. Uh, that originally wasn't available. I tried that day one. It didn't work. Um, I did try it again earlier today, and it worked just fine. I unlinked my PlayStation account from 
uh, an Epic account and linked it to what is my primary Epic account. It worked just fine. They said the other thing they're doing though is working on an account merging feature. So if you, for any reason, have a lot of content on both of those accounts, they will in the future. I think they're saying that's supposed to come in November. Uh, you'll be able to merge those accounts. Cool. Uh, I purposely hadn't done anything on the PlayStation account as far as buying things because I knew that if that day should ever come, I didn't want to have to deal with that. I did have one PlayStation exclusive skin for the game that I lost, but I wasn't worried about it. I knew that that was not going to cross over to the Switch because it was a PlayStation Plus exclusive skin for your character. Um, but yeah, I unlinked the account, uh, linked uh, my Epic account that I've been using on the Switch with the PlayStation. Worked perfectly. All of the stuff I had bought on the Switch was available on the PS4. It was painless, and it was nice to see that all of that stuff worked perfectly. And not only was all of the stuff there, it had brought over my uh, equipment preferences and the things I had already had equipped to my character just cool. brought them over too. I didn't even have to go in and re, you know, pick which skin, which equipment I wanted on my character. It was all there already. That's very convenient. So. Uh, right now, Fortnite is the only game that this cross-play stuff is working with, probably because we already knew that it was working at one point in the <laughs> past. Um, but they do say that if this works and if you know this is uh, you know successful, that other games could potentially uh, begin allowing you to play cross-platform with other systems. I think Minecraft is on that list for the next thing on that. That would make sense. Or at least it was mentioned somewhere. I think I heard it on the No or something. Yeah. So, if you are a PS4 player and you've been playing Fortnite, you can now play with other players on Xbox One, Switch, and PC, as well as mobile. So, that... That is good news. I mean, this is something that uh, Sony has been, I think, unnecessarily stubborn about over the last few months. Yeah, I've, all their excuses just didn't make any sense either. Yeah. So, you know, they were using the excuse that, you know, their player base was big enough that they, you know, that that was the place that their players were going to want to be and it didn't matter or they didn't need those other consoles um, but this can only be good for their players I think moving forward yeah I mean so, it shouldn't matter what system I'm playing the game on it's like if a friend of mine's got on a different system you know and we want to be able to go against each other that I mean that should be a thing we can do yeah just because uh, he just because one friend didn't want to get a PlayStation because he wanted to play Halo exclusively and then there's other game comes out and I can play it on mine and he can play it on his you know yeah yeah and we're, we're slowly getting to that point where the the platform that you buy the game on is not going to matter as much because if no matter what you're going to be able to play with your friends um, there are some games that it still may not happen with I think uh, Fallout 76, they've said they're still not sure yet if they're going to do cross-platform, if it's available. I would think they would at some point, but right now they're saying that they're still not planning on doing cross-platform play at this point. Uh, Destiny, I think, would be another one that a lot of people would like to see that cross-platform stuff work on. Yeah, I, I would be totally up for that to be a cross-platform thing. So, um, are there any of those games, Shannon, that you play that you'd like to see cross-platform implemented in? Uh, definitely Overwatch. That's that's the first one that comes to mind. Um, that, that would make perfect sense as well. Yeah. Uh, Diablo 3, I think you mentioned that earlier, didn't you? 
Yeah, Diablo <laughs> 3 would be cool because I, I do own it on PS3, but I have yeah. other friends who have it on Xbox. It would be and nice that, to play it across the board. That game is coming to Switch soon, and that's where I will probably play it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Diablo would be one of those games it would be nice to, to have cross-platform play I mean, with. I mean, really, it could apply to almost any fighting game as well. I mean, we, what do we have? Tekken 7 coming? Or, I mean, uh, Soul Calibur 6 mm-hmm. coming, coming out soon. Um, Tekken 7 is on both Xbox and PlayStation 4 and PC. Yeah, I think the um, only big fighting game that's not is Street Fighter right now, which is exclusive to, to Sony at the moment. Yeah, I mean, there's there's tons of, tons of fighting games. Uh, quite a few shooters that are multi-platform at this point. Any of the sports games. I know there's probably tons of people playing the new nba game that yeah. would love to play it with more friends that i would don't... think ea could probably get those working pretty quickly yeah. yeah fifa madden wow yeah so so there's definitely definitely a lot um are both of you guys signed up for Nintendo's online service at the moment? Yes. Okay. I'm actually not right this moment. Um, my my trial lapsed and I haven't re-upped it just yet. You're not missing uh, much. No, at the moment I don't know that I am. I mean, aside from the ability to not, or you know, to not be able to play Super Mario Brothers, but you know, I mean, twenty I bucks for that. a full year—that's not bad at all. No, it is. I'm going to have to buy the family plan, though, because... Yeah, but uh, even the family plan, that... I mean, you pointed out the... You know, that's not the topic. <laughs> so, uh, my son actually came to me today. He's like, Dad, um, I can't play Splatoon. I said, I know. Uh, we'll get that taken care of soon. So, uh, I'm going to have to to get the family plan so he can play Splatoon. Uh, but one of the things that people were unsure about was what was going to happen to your cloud saves should you decide to let your subscription lapse should you forget to re-up your subscription or just what um, a lot of people were afraid that um, and Nintendo wasn't making it clear that if you unsubscribe to the service you immediately lost your cloud saves that they were just going to be gone that's, uh, well that's uh, pretty uh, bad Nintendo, if you let it lapse and it's like the next day you had the funds for it yeah um luckily i think in most of those situations i think a lot of saves might not be lost because in that period of time are you really going to delete your saves from your system um well anything could happen that time that's true that's absolutely true. Uh, but a representative from Nintendo this week told IGN that if a Nintendo Switch Online membership expires, users won't be able to access their save data cloud backups. However, Nintendo will allow users who resubscribe within 180 days to access their previous save data cloud backups. So they will hold on to them for six months that's, before they're that's deleted. That's fair. That's fair. So. Do you, I, I'm very curious if they let you at least go retrieve them. It's a good question. I don't know. I I would understand why they wouldn't let you upload anything new. Yeah. But would they give you the opportunity, like if you were choosing to use the cloud save rather than local storage, would they give you the opportunity to go and retrieve what's there? I would think you would probably have to remember to do that before your subscription lapsed. Mm. Um, so, um, but it is good to finally have some clarification as to how long they're going to save them. Um, and I think six months is a pretty fair period. Yeah. I mean, some of those saves, especially with like Minecraft get rather large and the more you play games like that, the bigger those saves are going to get. So, um, you're talking about a lot of space potentially for some games, like I don't know that Nintendo would ever run out of space for people who use the cloud stuff, but still, um, the I, I can understand. I can understand them deleting them after six months. I think that's a fair amount of time. Uh, and if you're going to resubscribe, it's probably going to be within a you know a five to six month period. You're not going to you know 
unsubscribe and then two or three years later decide, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll get it back. Yeah, it's um, kind of like if I were to return to World of Warcraft right now, I would expect to find my character. But, I mean, it's been, I think, eight years since I quit playing. Wow. So it would be a little awkward finding my old character there still. <laughs> yeah, I've not tried to see if, uh, you know, how long Blizzard keeps stuff like that. Well, one thing I can absolutely guarantee you is Xbox holds your stuff indefinitely. Do they? Yeah, I mean, I I let my... So I had Xbox Live with a 360 in probably 2008 or 9 uh, when, my, when my Xbox died a horrible, painful death and this was before they were offering uh, extended warranties. I chose just not to not to get a new xbox mm -hmm. uh, i went you know somewhere close to like eight years without you know without uh having xbox live i got the xbox one signed in my all of my 360 games that were backwards compatible my save data was there nice it was still in their cloud storage from up you know close to a decade pre uh pre prior yeah that so. is that is nice it's really weird that they I mean they're keeping that and it's awesome but you you really you really shouldn't expect to come back and find it just that I conveniently I, I I had no expectations of it being there it blew my mind I know I mentioned it on on the Oki cast you know back in December when I when I got the Xbox one but I mean mm -hmm. it just the fact that all of that stuff was there, I the the game that took me the most by surprise was N plus, because you know I, I jumped in and I because N plus was backwards compatible, and all of my progress for all of my levels was saved, and I was like, uh, this I you know I was expecting to start fresh. Yeah, well, you probably promptly deleted it and started over. <laughs> <laughs> Because, I mean, if it's been that long since you've played a game, you probably are just going to restart it. Yeah, I mean, it just... I, it just... I thought it was I thought it was crazy. It, it's, uh, it's definitely a nice feature to have, but you're right. You should never expect a company to just pay to keep that content on a server somewhere. Yeah. Um, but that is good to know. But it, it is also... I, I understand Nintendo's... Uh, you, you know... Reasoning, I, I guess not reasoning, but um, <clears throat> this being the limitation for keeping your, your save data um, up in the cloud, and at least we know. It'd be nice if they notified you. I don't know if they do, if you read the fine print and stuff. Um, so, uh, but at least now we do have an idea of how long they're going to keep your information. This is something I always worried about with Pokemon Bank. So, like, I... I haven't played a new Pokemon game since I don't know. I mean, it's it's been a, it's been a good minute, but I mean, I I keep my I have a reminder set in my phone to keep my Pokemon Bank data active because whenever the new Pokemon game comes out, that's the last thing I want is to find out that oh, you didn't pay your subscription renewal on the 3DS, so now that the Switch game is out, all of your Pokemon that you had been saving in the bank are now gone. Mm -hmm. So. I, and, Do we, and I don't think I don't think there's ever been a specific uh, explanation as to to how they handle that because I've never I've never let it lapse and I I just I just know that every April I jump into my 3ds and pay the five dollars. Yeah, and see, I've never even purchased the Pokemon Bank, so I had never bothered to read up on how that works. Um, do we know yet if that's going to work with the Let's Go games? I Not, doubt it, but there, there's there's no specific indication. But this it probably was, won't be till the next proper game. This was their way of tying everything together. So, like you, the the way that they released all of the Gen One, Gen Two, and Gen Three games on the um, on the uh, 3DS eShop, mm -hmm. and then you had the the re-release of uh, of Ruby and Sapphire. So you you have the potential to get every Pokemon on a 3DS 
mm-hmm. and then put them all in Pokemon Bank and get them into the most current game. Yeah. So it it would blow my mind if they wrecked that infrastructure. Because well, I mean, like a... it, it was the first way. It was the first um, the first step towards making the game somewhat modern. Yeah, and but with the Let's Go games, we're going back to the Gen One era Pokemon. That is true. So, so I doubt you would be able to bring newer Pokemon in. There may there may be some integration with Pokemon Bank to allow you to get any Pokemon that you have in the Let's Go games into the Pokemon Bank, so that whenever the new game comes out, uh, the next proper, I guess you would call it proper, uh, release of the series on Switch, that's when you would start to be able to bring those Pokemon back in. Now they did that with uh, Sun and Moon and the. Um... Is it just Ultimate Sun and Moon? I can't remember. Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. Or Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. <laughs> so original. Um, <laughs> I, the the way that they handled that in those games was they so when when Sun and Moon came out, that's when they put Gen One out on uh, on the eShop. Yeah. Any of the Pokemon that you caught in Red, Blue, or Yellow, you weren't able to bring them in to Sun and Moon until, I mean, it was. Good it was while. a good. It was a good like six to ten months after the game came out. They they finally did an update, and then I, I think they just added in all the character models. Like I don't think they had them. So, no, I, I bet I they know. were already in there. Is just just the getting the data itself for how to get yeah. these monsters, which you can't capture, was the issue. Yeah, because I mean, you, Sun Moon Ultra Sun Ultra Moon, you can have all. What is it now? Like over nine thousand. <laughs> like, you, you could have like all eight hundred something. I don't know. It's, it's it's a ridiculous. It's a number. ridiculous number. But you can have all of them except for the new one, the new Pokemon that came out this week. And yeah, I was gonna say it grew by one this week with Pokemon Go with the new Pokemon <laughs> in there. <laughs> so. so weird. So. <laughs> Will that Pokemon show up in Let's in Let's Go Pikachu? Probably because all of the Pokemon Go stuff is supposed to be uh, transferable. Transferable to the game, yeah. yeah. Too bad I so. can't log into my account to care anymore. <laughs> uh, so, well, there you go. Six months is how long you'll have if you decide to let your subscription lapse for cloud saves. <sighs> Microsoft and Mojang announced a new Minecraft game this week. No way. Yeah, they did. They did. Uh, this is a separate release from Minecraft, uh, but it is called Minecraft Dungeons, and it looks like pretty much everything I've ever wanted from a Minecraft game. Uh, this The announcement happened during Minecon this week. They showed off a trailer that was like a minute and a half long. They didn't really show off any gameplay, but if you've seen Minecraft, you know what to expect. Uh, but it is a four-player dungeon crawler set in the Minecraft universe. Um, According to a summary, it says, you'll discover new weapons and items that will help you defeat a ruthless swarm of new and nasty mobs, fight or flee through canyons, swamps, and of course mines. The levels are said to be action-packed, treasure-stuffed, and wildly varied. Uh, Right now, they're looking for a 2019 launch, and PC is the only confirmed platform at the moment. So, uh, I would expect this will come to consoles at some point. Uh, but literally all we have to go on is about a minute and a half long trailer that was a, a uh, CG trailer. Uh, they showed the characters going down into down uh, using an actual elevator, not like a, a Minecraft elevator, if you know what those are, which is just water. Um, This was an actual (laughs) elevator going down into a mine. The elevator opened. They got out of the elevator and then were immediately attacked by what, according to its shadow, would be like a Balrog-looking creature from Lord of the Rings. So um, we didn't get to see what that creature was. It was just a huge uh, monster that had uh, a horned-looking head from the shadow. So a Balrog is the closest sort of description I could come up with. Um, but I guarantee I'll be looking more into this because this sounds fantastic. 
Like that's been my biggest sort of issue with Minecraft was there was not a lot of game to it. I know a lot of people love it and I've enjoyed playing it for dozens and dozens of hours with people. Um, but I wanted more of a dungeon crawler style game and we're finally getting that. Sounds cool. So, uh, Minecraft Dungeons coming to the PC sometime in 2019. But that's it for the news. So, uh, we have no guests this week. We do have another guest lined up for next week. Uh, Edward DiGeronimo is going to join us from Saturnine Games to talk about some of the stuff that he and his company are doing. Um, that'll be on next week's show. Uh, so, we figured we just have another discussion this week and Ethan, this is one you and I talked about a little bit before the show based off of the upcoming Castlevania TV show on Netflix. Season two will be starting here in just about three weeks. And then there was some news about the monster hunter movie. Do you want to share with people what that was? Yes. If I can remember what it was, uh, Ron Perlman. Yes. Was. Ron Perlman has a part in the movie. I didn't actually look what his part was when it was announced. I just know that he's going to be in the monster hunter movie. Uh, I think we assumed he was going to be devil Joe. <laughs> he's going to, he is going to be the monster. They fight. It's just going to be Ron Perlman, the monster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'll just be like some village. He'll be a hunter of some sort, yeah. Village elder or hunter, someone awesome in the movie, probably. Yeah. So that's gonna be cool to look forward to. Uh, so, but what we thought was, let's just have a discussion about video game movies and TV shows. What are the best video game movies and TV shows that we've seen? Um. So, what do you guys think, Shannon? What is your pick for the best video game movie or TV show that you've seen? Um, so I'm, I'm a big fan of the, the, uh, 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 the Tomb Raider movie. The first one that they did. Angelina Angelina Jolie. Jolie. Yeah. The the very first one. Yeah. The sequel was kind of, I like, I liked that first movie. Yeah. I don't remember it, but I did see it twice (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I thought Angelina Jolie was a good pick to play Laura Croft I have zero clue if the story followed any actual game plot like the more modern Tomb Raider did but the uh, it was it was a good a good storyline good um, a good movie from what I remember from years and years ago yeah. Uh, a more modern one that was fantastic was Rampage. But that was more of a really good summer action movie than I could call it a video game movie because they took a, a arcade game that I don't recall having any story other than people turn into monsters and they kind of wrecked the original, like the origin behind where the, the, the monsters come from. Yeah. But it I have not still... actually... I've not actually seen that one. Gosh, it was so good. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it in theaters, then went and bought the movie. <laughs> yeah. So. See, I sort of expected just from the beginning that that was going to be a terrible movie, but everybody that saw it over the summer said it was surprisingly good. Yeah. It's it's kind of hard. I don't think The Rock does bad movies. <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> I, I can't think of any Have movie. Have you seen Tooth Fairy? The fairy was good. <laughs> Imagine how bad that movie would have been without The Rock. There you go. Thank you, Ethan. Imagine how bad that movie would have been if Jack Black was the Tooth Fairy. Oh, gosh. <laughs> hey, I will not have you speak badly. <laughs> yeah, you don't know Mon- if he's on the guest list yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, Oh, yes, yeah. so I I have not seen that. Do you remember that Daniel Craig was in the uh, the Lara Croft movie? Ah, oh, he played he played one of the bad guys in that movie. Googling who Daniel Craig is. <laughs> oh, James okay. Bond. Yes, yes. I don't remember him in the movie. Yeah, now I gotta figure out where he was in that. Yeah, he was one of the bad guys. 
Okay. So you'll have to. I need to go back and actually watch that. It's been a while since I've seen that one. Uh, but I, I do remember really enjoying that one. Um, it wasn't, you know, Oscar worthy type movie, but I, for, you know, it was a fun hour and a half, two hours movie from what I remember. So mm-hmm. what about you, Ethan? What do you think the best video game movie or TV show you've seen is? Hmm. Uh, the best is kind of, you know, ambiguous cause that's, it's going to vary from game to movie to to whoever's doing what with it, but if you're not going to limit me on like live action or animation, I'm going to go. No, with, it can be anything. Then I'm going to go with the uh, Persona Three movies. All okay. Four of them. Was there? Yeah, four of them. I had to look at my shelf there. Aren't out. those basically though just the cutscenes pulled out of the out of the game no, and put into a movie? Not board? at all. They are full on cutscene or not. See, you got me there. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. It is a full-on story retelling of okay. the Persona Three. Yeah, and even even the uh, uh, Blu-ray extras scenes on the or extras are like uh, the, the advertisements to buy the movies, and it's done like with the uh, the salesman from the series. It's playing his music, and he's trying to sell it to you. Of course, they didn't subtitle that part, so it's all Japanese that I don't understand, but it's still, mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's a nice touch. Yeah, I, I, it, I've i seen Persona 4, and I've seen most of P- Persona 5. I don't think I've seen the two, the Persona 3 movies yet, because there were multiple ones, right? There's only four parts, and I, I want to say part 1 and 2 are on Netflix, but that's probably changed since then. Okay. Yeah. And then I think my pick would be, I, I, I don't know that I'd call it a great movie, but one of my favorites is the first Mortal Kombat movie. We'll see that. That's your, your, your setting in the bar there. That's you, you gotta be like that or above or Mortal Kombat's pretty good. It's hard to top. Mortal Kombat, I think that the first one is good. The second one, not, not so, so much. much. <laughs> not so much. But I, I enjoyed that first movie quite a bit. Um, it had the music. It had the... I remember the, the action being pretty decent. <laughs> it had... It had a bunch of ninjas. <laughs> it had the Highlander as Raiden. Uh had Shang Tsung telling everybody that their soul was his. It didn't matter who it was. <laughs> and he did it with, you know, he was so angry every time he said it too. So there's that. And I will also, I would throw in the first uh, Resident Evil movie. Like, I don't care what anybody says. I, I really like the first Resident Evil movie. I've, I've seen them all with the exception of the most recent one. I think six I haven't seen yet. Um, I need to because I own the other ones. Yeah, I think there are six of those. I own oh five gosh. of them, and I haven't seen the sixth sixth one yet. I think they're still making them, Shannon. Oh, mm. I don't gosh. think they are. I think six is the last one. That's what they want you to think. I think they're done with that. No, no, no. They're going to do the Monster uh, Hunter movie, and then she's going to be like, all right, we need to make the next Resident <laughs> Evil. Oh, gosh, yeah, I forgot she's going to be in the Monster Hunter movie. Yeah, because... Yeah, so- Whoa. Uh, well, her husband's the director. What do you? Yeah, expect? it is a it's a uh, Paul W S Anderson movie. Gotcha. Yeah, and so it's Capcom's throwing the money, and he's like, "Yep, get my wife in here." And so, <laughs> so I mean, we could beg for you know a real protagonist all we want, but we're getting her. <laughs> Mila Jovovich is the star of the movie, and she's gonna have to fight Ron Perlman. There you go. That is that's Ron the movie. Per- Ron Perlman is the protagonist, as far as I'm concerned, right now. <laughs> Even if he is Devil Joe, it is a Devil it Joe. It does movie. not matter. That's, he, yeah, he could be the villain. It's not gonna he could matter. Bring back Hellboy, and Hellboy could be the monster that they're fighting, and it'll be just be another Hellboy movie. Can we have Mila Jovovich fight using her multipass? Uh, if not, then it's a horrible movie. <laughs> she just walks up to a Devil Joe and shows it to him, and the Devil Joe dies. <laughs> That's what, that's what I want in that they, movie. They better have a scene where she's carving the monster. <laughs> of course. And, and it's got to do like the really horrible 
spray and stuff, and she's like, "Ah, oh, I thought they smelled bad on the outside." And then halfway halfway through the movie, there has to be a a loading screen. <laughs> I, I want to know how they're going to do the felines. <laughs> They'll be CG. They're going to be adorable. Yeah. Or creepy, one or the other. <laughs> Have you guys seen the uh, the Netflix Castlevania show? Yes, no. all four episodes. Yeah, there were only four episodes. You should go watch it, Shannon. It's really good. It's like watching a a movie. All four episodes. I will add it about. to my list. I th- it takes place before Castlevania two, right? Three, three. Okay. Uh, the one thing I did do remember being disappointed about with the first season of Castlevania was there was not a lot of Dracula in it. Like he showed up for a few (laughs) minutes at the very beginning. He showed up for a couple minutes at the very end. And then Dracula was absent everywhere else. It was, uh, it was really just a a movie to set up the Belmonts. Um, The (laughs) Belmonts. Well, yeah. Uh, So I'm hoping that we get more Dracula because I liked Dracula in that. I, I want more of Dracula than I do of uh, is it Simon or is it one of the other ones? I it's, can't remember. It's not Simon. It, oh, is it Trevor? Is Trevor number three? Oh man. You know what? I have the, the games right here listed in front of me. Where is number three? I'd have to. One, two, Dracula's Curse. So. Um, <laughs> But like, yeah, the the whole point of the it is Trevor. Okay. the The reason that Dracula is so evil in this is because his wife gets killed, and then he disappears for three episodes. His wife was human, and shows up at the very end. Um, and it also introduces the, one of the coolest protagonists as well in the series. Yeah, yeah. We Trevor get... Belmont is is the. I wasn't talking. Are you talking? You're talking about Alucard. Yeah. Okay. Everyone who's played Castlevania Symphony of the Night knows it's like probably the top. And like I'm looking through, I, I'm looking through the cast of the uh, the series. I I love the cast of this. Richard Armitage plays Trevor Belmont. My wife loves him. She watched that just so she could listen to him. Oh, do we have a cast talk? of uh, who's shown up in the it uh the in the uh, season two coming out on the 26th of October? Uh, I just have the full cast pulled up on IMDb. I couldn't tell you which ones are, are where. Um, but the guy that plays Dracula, I like way more than Richard Armitage. is Graham McTavish. Both of them were in the Hobbit movies. Um, but then people like Timothy Omenson, uh, Matt Frewer... Tony Amendola are all in the in the series. It's a really good cast of, of of actors. I wish most of these people weren't listed as additional voices, so I could tell well, what they did. You could tell who they are. Yeah, I understand um, why. So, but yeah, and I think season two is supposed to be maybe eight episodes. Yes, it's supposed to be twice quick, the I excitement. Think, yeah. Yeah, they doubled it from the first season. I was a little bit disappointed the first season was only four episodes, but if you do watch them as you know back to back to back and basically just treat it as a movie, it's really well done. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I think that comes out on the 26th yes. on Netflix. So comes out the same day as Castlevania. I think it's called Requiem. Right? The which is a, is a PlayStation exclusive. It's Rondo of Blood or Dracula X and Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which Rondo yeah. is happens first and then you go right into the symphony. So, yeah. so you have the full story for those two games right there in that package. There you go. Um, but yeah, Shannon, you should definitely watch Castlevania. It, it's very, uh, it's a very bloody anime, but it's very well done. I will add it to my list next time I'm on Netflix. So, uh, the first season really is just the length of a movie, so you only have to put a couple hours into that, and you can watch the whole series. It is a little hard to hear, like, the first episode. I don't know why that is. I don't know. I, like, turn my TV up to, like, 40. It's weird. 
It's usually at 15. Hey, Ace Attorney's on this list of movies I have pulled up. Oh, but um, are there any other video game movies or TV shows you got to bring up before we're done? Ace Attorney? <laughs> I have not seen that. Uh, I'll see if I can find where we watched it for Day to Drain for you. <laughs> I'm I'm both interested and not really that interested in watching that. I haven't seen it, the... It, I mean, I haven't played the games, but I'm curious to see how they translate that into a movie. Uh, the What we saw was a retelling of the important parts of the first game. Okay. And they used the whoever did the translation made sure to use the American names for the translation. So you'll hear them saying the incorrect name, but read the, or you'll hear them say the correct name, but you're reading the incorrect name because you're seeing like, oh, this is uh, red, white of blue corp. And it's like no, this is this guy, and it's it's a little awkward if if you care about that. Otherwise, it's. It's just a kind of a strange experience of a movie. Yeah. And of course, any movie done by Uwe Boll is a masterpiece. You're not uh, laughing. I, I'm laughing. sorry. I think you cut out there, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've only actually seen one Uwe Boll movie, and that's the first Blood Rain movie. Oh. Which is bad. It is really bad. You know, there's a lot of Pokemon so, movies. That's true. I haven't seen very many. There's, what, 19 of them or something like I that? I cannot believe I didn't even think about that. You know what? Pokemon. Well, I have 43 hits on the word Pokemon alone in this movie <laughs> thing. I want to say there's like 19 of those movies. There's a lot of them. I did watch the Yokai Watch movie not that long ago. Dang, that's a good one too. That was Dang. pretty good. That was a pretty good movie. Oh, Ratchet and Clank was all right. That's on my. That's in my Netflix queue, but I haven't seen it. Go watch it. It's great. Um, but Andrew has been like obsessed with Yokai Watch the last few weeks. So Minecraft uh, movie to be announced. Untitled Mario film to be announced. Dragon's yeah. Lair the movie to be announced. <laughs> Angry Birds 2 comes out within a year, or in about a year. September 6, uh, 2019. Really? Yep. I still won't watch that. Okay. So I mean, I've not seen the first one. I really don't care that much about Angry Birds. Like, if my kids want to watch it, I might sit down and watch it with them. But that would be the only reason I'd watch the Angry Birds movie. Final Fantasy Spirits Within I think I've seen that one There are two of those movies From Final Fantasy 7 aren't there Final Fantasy 7 Advent Children mm -hmm. Apparently there's a Professor Layton movie That's like Nine years old Really Professor Layton and the Eternal Diva the Tech... DuckTales TV show, but that's not really a video game based it's more of a TV show. It was the other way around. More like really. a TV show that got a video game made later. Yeah. Uh, Tekken. There's a couple of those movies. There are, aren't there? Live action and animated. You guys have talked about those on the show before. I think we have. Was, uh... did, did you talk about those, Shannon? The Tekken movies? I don't think so. Oh. Probably me and Shelby at some point. I don't know. The Tekken movie that's in the game on the 3DS was pretty good. I mean, it was st a stupid Tekken movie, but it was still pretty good. <laughs> Is that the one where it has, like, the guy ripped the raptor in half from the jaw? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that, like, got, like, a long time ago. It's got, like, the robot chick flying with the panda and all the... Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's a stupid fighting game movie. Tekken's weird. I love it. All right, well, there you go. I think that's a good place to end. That will be 
the show for this week. So thank you, Shannon, for being on the show. Yep. And Ethan, thank you as well for being on the show this week. There's a Neko Atsume movie being made. Or is it already made? Where is, where's that link? It came out two years ago. I know what you'll be watching. If you want to reach out to us, we have tons of new ways to do so. You can email us at uh, podcast at prosgent.com. That's P-R-O-C-G-E-N-T dot com. You can send us a voicemail if you want by clicking on the voicemail link on the right side of the website. You can send us voicemails up to 90 seconds in length, and we'll play those on future episodes of the show and respond to the questions that you have. Uh, if you like what we do here, you can now support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash pgint. Patreon supporters will get a video version of the podcast a day early. These will normally go out on Tuesdays. Patreon supporters will get them on Monday. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash progenint. Check out our YouTube channel that we've got and see the content we've got going on up there. And then we still do have the Facebook group where you can interact with us on a daily basis as well. <laughs>